so hopefully I have a slideshow and hopefully uh, it will hook up okay to everything uh, we'll see if not I have all the notes that are needed for this um, thank you all for coming tonight and for taking time out of your day uh, we all have extremely busy days so it's very heartening to see all the wonderful souls in this audience and karma is often a misunderstood thing often we feel as though karma comes to us as a punishment that's that's probably the general consensus of of the whole world because people karma and reincarnation they are now very common terms people use all over the world um, and no longer is it just related to one religion many people who don't have religions and say they're just spiritual still believe in karma and reincarnation and what I would like at the end of this is for you to feel the love and compassion that God and Divine Mother has for us in playing this Leela with us in uh, taking us from little souls Yoganandaji said that we begin our uh, incarnations as crystals so we were all little amethysts and little lapis and from that point we actually have a guru there is someone who guides us now he, he you know yoga does teach that until we're humans we're in a group soul and so there is um, advancing kind of a group advances together and then periodically someone pops out into the next group and a new something enters the group and so we progress though through group karma from little crystals to little plants, amoebas. You can see how Divine Mother is saying, oh, my dear little philodendron, my, <laughs> my beautiful <laughs> little Nag Champa. You know, the Divine Mother is looking at us this way and she's saying, you want to progress to me. You want to unify your soul with me. And so out of love and compassion, we get our karma thrown at us in our face, we often feel. Yoganandaji said, as, as Dharmarajan was saying, every time we meditate, we can release seeds of karma. It's called roasting the seeds of karma. Roasting the seeds so that they don't germinate and have to necessarily play out on this worldly field. And so we have created all those little seeds in past lives, and they are called, uh, why am I, why am I, <laughs> yeah, sorry. They're called vrittis. Sometimes when there's inspiration in the room, it's very difficult to think. Um, and so, uh, these vrittis are lodged in our astral spine and as we meditate, as we progress through our karma, these little vrittis are either germinated, I mean non-germinated in our meditation and just roasted and we don't have to necessarily face them uh, or maybe we graduate. But then also we find many things happening in life all a test to see how we will react in life. Will we re be reactive or can we be non-reactive? Will we react with an open loving heart or will we react contractively with anger and hate? Which a lot of that happens in the world, this anger and hate stuff. But we can focus on the other side. So, in reality, all this karma coming to us, very often people will say, Yoganandaji said, we all choose our life ahead of time. You know, we come into the embryo, we, we, we come into the, um, the egg and create the zygote 
the soul, when, when the two merge, the egg and the sperm, when they, when they merge, they create a flash of light in the astral world. And Yoganandaji said, souls shoot to try and get that flash of light. If you have a resonance with that light, you go there. And what would be contained in that light? It would be, this is the life this soul resonates with. This is the life this soul is going to have. These are the lessons this soul is going to have. And so we, in the astral world, started thinking, hmm, I guess it's time to go down to Earth. Yoganandaji said we cannot work out all our karma in the astral world. It's not possible. The Earth, for us, is the place where we can begin to really work out some of the juicy karma that we need to, <laughs> to work out. So at some point, there is a desire in the heart, in the astral heart, that says time to go down there or up there, wherever it is, and face it. And I want to because I want God. That's what the soul says. I want God. The soul says I want to unify with God. And so we really did choose it. We often feel like victims of karma. But if we can change our perspective and start looking at it as opportunities to change, ways we can grow, ways we can move closer to the divine. And then a very important teaching for karma and reincarnation is that when we create bad karma, which we did in past lives, and we create good karma too, when we create the bad karma, we've created it from being off balance, from being off our center. Think of the times when we glance a nasty look at someone or we say, why, why do you have to be that way? Every time, that takes going off center. It takes saying, why is that? You know, we, we, even our bodies will go off center, which, ha, huh? you know, when we're especially not happy about something. And so we create this negative karma. We create, and it lodges inside of us and it's usually connected to attachments things to be things should be a certain way i'm attached to it being a certain way i'm not going to call it an attachment because it just is it should be that way i'm convinced and so we have these attachments that say things should be a certain way and then when they don't go our way we're disappointed and angry anger comes from feeling as though our desires are thwarted. So if we can back up a little bit with perspective and realize that, oh, I don't have to be angry. Instead, I can look at life as, oh, something's trying to happen here. It wasn't what I wanted. Hmm. What is trying to happen here? How can I transmute my anger into curiosity? How can I transmute that anger into, oh, I guess my way wasn't going to happen? Rather than force, try to force it with our anger, instead we learn to come more from a centered place, from a place more of understanding, from a place of compassion. Sometimes we have to count to ten first before we can do that. It's a very important technique. Just walk out of the room. You find yourself like, <gasps> just, just walk out of the room. It's not that hard. It's really not that hard to do. But it is when we're ready. So we want to make sure to really be careful about how we are creating karma. Because we also create karma when we do good karma, but good karma helps neutralize bad karma. So we want to be doing positive karma. So let's begin um, this. If it works, does it work? Yes. Now is that starting in the beginning? The ve okay. This is a very hopeful quote by our Param Guru. Swami Sri Yukteswarji. 
he says, forget the past. The vanished lives of all men are dark with many shames. Human contact is ever unreliable until anchored in the divine. Everything in future will improve if you are making a spiritual effort now. You see how beautiful that is? That's a beautiful thing to say. It gives us hope. Like, okay, okay, I'm, I'm going to forget the past. I'm not going to keep bringing it up and saying, oh, well, I did that because, you know, my bad karma made me. Or I did that. I can't help it. Or, darn, that thing happened again. You know, that's my bad karma. Oh, I must have been a really bad person in my past life to attract such a horrible thing. I've felt that way many times before. But in actuality, most people who are pursuing the divine, who are pursuing good, who meditate, are very, very good people. And so we should not punish ourselves now thinking we were bad recently. Most likely, we were bad a long time ago. But most likely, if we really are searching for God now, if we really do have sincerity in our souls this way, it was a long time ago we were that way. And it takes a while for all that karma to get paid back. Most likely, we learned from those lessons a long time ago and stopped murdering people and <laughs> stopped doing very adharmic things and began to say, oh, you know, first they say, oh, life works much better when I follow the rules. I don't end up in jail. And then we move from that to, oh, Life works much better when I'm in harmony with life, when I try and like people, when I try and be a good person. That's where most of us are at. So forget this punish myself because I you know, did something bad in my li last life. Forget that punishment thought. Karma that comes to us is trying to correct a wrong attitude. We were out of balance when we did something. Karma circles back around to put us back in balance. That balance can be, the, or the, I should say, the impact of that balancing force. If we are already in our center, then what's that force going to do? We're already in our center. It might come back. We might stub our toe instead of hit our head, you know? So we want to strive to be in our center. OK, next. OK, this is just a beautiful quote from the, from the Bhagavad Gita. Nay, but once more, take my last word. My utmost meaning have. Precious thou art to me, right well beloved. Listen, I tell thee for thy comfort this. See thy comfort. Give me thy heart. Adore me. Serve me. Cling in faith and love and reverence to me. So shalt thou come to me, I promise true, for thou art sweet to me. And let go those rites and writ duties. Fly to me alone. Make me thy single refuge. I will free thy soul from all its sin. Be of good cheer. That's the guru talking to the disciple. The guru will take on much of our karma. OK, let's go on to the next. So the best way to overcome karma, to change karma even, Yogananda Ji said, we can change karma with energy and willpower. But the best way to overcome karma is to align our own will with God's will. And that's not easy to do when we have a lot of attachments to other things. This person needs to be the way I want them to be. I got to have this job, not that job. I have to have, you know, this food, not that food. And why are you cooking that way? And you should be cooking this way. And, you know, all of those things are on this level. Whereas the God alignment of our will is on this level. This is where we want to live from. This is guaranteed to help us change our karma. In fact, if our um, will is aligned with God's will, we don't want to change our karma. When your will is already aligned with God's will, you are doing your dharma, even if that is just changing a diaper, 
even if that is just driving a cab, even it does not matter. If you are doing God's will for you, you are living in your highest. And if you are feeling God's presence at the same time, you are guaranteed to overcome your karma. Okay, so of course, in order to align your will, you need to go inside for guidance and try and find what he truly wants for you. And also, of course, we're a meditation center. <laughs> meditation and prayer are the best ways to do this, although I have a few techniques also. Okay. So when we go inward, it's very helpful to have these attitudes, okay? We want to be interested and even curious what God wants for us. We need an open mind to his guidance, not just an attachment to what we want. We need an open mind to this. Also an open heart to receive that guidance. And we're going to do an exercise on how to receive. Most of all, seek inner approval on things. Of course, we have adaptations we do to what our family wants, to what society wants. But really, if something is really going against something inside of us, we shouldn't just follow it. So don't just follow the rules and do what you think you should do to please God. Very often, if our life is just about wake up, do this, do that, you know, go to work, come back, have dinner, do this, do that, watch TV, go back to sleep, repeat. These types of things, you know, we think, well, if I went, if I, as long as I go to temple once a week, I'm pleasing God and everything's okay. But that's not necessarily actively seeking God's inner guidance. Okay. Um, so this is another, we're going to go into some of the, um, the exercises now. And this is another quote that actually is part of, uh, yeah, okay. So I'll just read it. Every human characteristic is like an individual. So every part of us, we're like a football team inside with different characteristics inside. Each has a definite personality of its own. If the different characteristic with which the subconscious has been programmed are all hedged about possessively or primed to aggressiveness with the thought of I, the resistance to change once the order comes from the conscious mind may assume the nature of an all-out war. Sometimes only great suffering can soften the hard core of egotism and make it malleable to improvement. So if we have this is, this is what, oh, the title is Rem Remove the Thwarting Cross Currents of Ego. This is a beautiful phrase that Yoganandaji said. Remove the thwarting cross currents of ego. Meaning, I want this. No, I want that. No, I want this. No, I want that. No, I want this. I want that. And there's no focus. There's no clarity about what we really want. Instead, our energies are going in all sorts of different directions trying to want something, because we have too many wants. All the vrittis are saying, yes, yes, yes. OK. So these are ways that we can remove the thwarting cross currents of mind. We need to gain clarity. So one of the things is keep your energy raised. Yoganandaji taught something called energization exercises. Dharmraj and did five of those to be able to overcome our karma, we need to be committed to having high energy. If we're just being couch potatoes, things aren't going to change. And it doesn't mean you have to be, you know, just some super athlete either. It, rather, if you have this higher energy, um, then, then you are able to overcome. I know it sounds obvious, but it's not obvious because very often, suppose we our, we don't have a job, and we need a job. Yoganandaji said, I would shake the world until I found a job. You know, we might say, well, I gave my, my resume out to five different companies. What's wrong? 
Instead, Yogananda, no, he said, shake the world. So you just have to push more energy out than the karma is doing. Suppose the karma of joblessness is here, but you raise your energy to here, then you're going to overcome that. This is what Yogananda Ji talked about. Expand your consciousness. So this is through meditation. Expanding our consciousness puts us into something called solution consciousness, which I'm going to comment on in a moment. Get rid of worry. I have a fun exercise for this called a worry fast. And fabulous. Think of all the worries we have. Doesn't that take away clarity? What do I want? I don't know, but I know that I worry about this and that and this and that. We need to just come into focus. We need to realize worries do not help anything. What is trying to happen? This is a, another wonderful phrase that Yoganandaji Ji taught. When something bad is happening, rather than jumping to, oh my God, what am I going to do? Now, of course, there can always be the shock of a bad karma, right? A shock. So we get through the shock. We, it's not like, as yogis, we repress feelings. We acknowledge, OK, I was shocked. I was hurt. I was mad. Fine. But then we say, OK, how can I solve this? Now, let me tune into what God, why God gave me this car accident. You know, why did I have this car accident? Did it come after I had a bunch of critical thoughts? That seems to be the, the theme. Did it come to shake me out of the way I've been with life? Did it just come because, you know, I might have hit someone in my chariot during my, <laughs> <laughs> during my Bhagavad Gita days? So, <laughs> OK, next. Uh, Cultivate solution consciousness. This is part of the raising and expanding the consciousness. Solution consciousness is this awful thing happened, and rather than say it's awful, it's horrible, there's just no way to do it, I do not see what I could do to help this. Instead, it's like Dharmarajan is very good at that. If something bad happens, he says, Divine Mother, um, I show me the good that is meant to come out of this situation. And you'll see, like, someone might lose a job who's been a workaholic and could not be with their family hardly at all. Suddenly they lose their job, the family has to simplify its finances, and suddenly everybody's happy again because they all get to spend more time together. And then maybe they find a new job that isn't the same as in the old way, maybe it's a new job that allows them to spend more time or allows them to meditate more. See, you, you can see the good coming out of these things. And most of all, when someone dies, we need to know they're not dead. We need to know that their presence is with us. Their love is with us. When we pray to them, they're there with us. We can be caught in grief for years over the loss. But if we tune in daily to the joy and bliss of their soul moving forward in life, it can be helpful. It does not mean there's not a normal, naturally natural grieving process. There always is. It does not mean we don't feel a sense of loss. But we can also tune into their presence and know they're not dead. And just because they're not with us, they want, you know, they're right there trying to say, hey, 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 you know, don't be so hurt about this after a while, after the grief. I'm here. I'm here to help. I'm here to be with you. Um, not yet. Oh, let's see. Okay. So practice right ad action, yata dharma tata jaya. So this is act in dharma. You're going to not be creating the bad karma if you act in dharma. This is the other thing for overcoming karma. If we act in dharma now, and this is related to what our Param Guru said, all things will be good if we practice spiritual life now. So if we're beginning to do and live in our um, dharma, that means if we're shopkeepers, we're not ripping people off. That means if we're accountants in companies, we're not taking extra fees. That, that means a lot of things that 
have happened to us, actually. <laughs> but even in little ways, how much do we do little lies to people? You know, we each have our own way of, of being in Dharma, of being in our truth, of practicing honesty. Um, then God reminding habits. One wonderful way is practicing the presence of God. That is, having an active conversation with the divine throughout the day. Tuning in. What do you want here? What should we make for breakfast for everybody? What should I read right now? I used to, I used to be a physics major. I became an engineer. I would have solutions to problems come in my dreams. And uh, so then I didn't have to like sit at a piece of paper and like, you know, figure it out that way. It would just come in the dream. I'm not saying this happened every day. <laughs> but it would just come in. We can, we can have solutions come to us in ways we don't expect if the mind and the heart is open. Okay? Most of all, remember the true goal of life, self-realization to find this unity, okay? Okay, here's a, this is a sub uh, quote of something Dharmarajan wrote. Only by perfect self-honesty and dynamic self-effort will you eliminate forever the influence of delusion in your life. Remember, it was you who invited that influence by your own thoughts and actions. Live from today onward, God, guided by divine wisdom within. Okay, next. Okay, so where are we on time? Do, do we know? Okay. Okay. So we have a few exercises to do that are very helpful for this. One is to just, you know, the, one of the ways to tune into divine guidance is by helping to improve our... Um, intuition and this is really uh, visualization exercises and the thing about exercises in a workshop let me find this yeah the thing about exercises in a workshop is you know this requires one to go inward and to try and feel a true answer. And it's kind of hard to do that in a crowd of 100. So we're going to practice it. But what I'm hoping is when you go home, you try it in the silence of a room you might have or in your puja room, depending on how loud or quiet that is. You can find a quiet place to practice this, OK? So everybody sit up straight, close your eyes. and. Rajesh, you don't have to worry about this. Why don't you fast forward it? Well, actually, no, before we, before we do that, let's, I'm just going to read through it. Before we actually do the exercise, let's know what it is. So first, Yogananda Ji said, a problem is half solved already once it is stated clearly. In seeking guidance, form a clear mental picture of the question you have. So a lot of times when we're confused about something, we, if we find the right question to answer, suddenly it will diffuse the confusion that's there. So try to have clarity. If you have a problem, which maybe you can even think of now, and we'll use that in the, um, expl or in the exercise. If you have a problem, you, it's very important to try and just find clarity within the problem. It's very often to say, yeah, but it's this, or it's that, or it's this, or it's that. Try and um, focus that into a very simple question, if you can. It, the, the more focused the question is, the easier it is to get the answer. OK. In fact, Yogananda Ji said, no time is really needed, only sufficient mental clarity and energy. Meaning, once we have that clarity, sometimes the answer will come instantaneously. But we need the clarity. And very often we say, well, I prayed, nothing happened. And it's because we didn't have the clarity. And you'll learn a little bit later, we weren't listening with our heart. OK, next. 
So we're going to think of the issue and concentrate at the Agya Chakra. So Yoganandaji said, this is the sending station of us. This part of the astral body is the sending station. So when we have an issue, we're going to try and radiate the question through this point to the divine. Now ask for guidance from the superconsciousness. You can send out a strong thought such as, what shall I do? Or what is trying to happen? These are things you can ask with your specific question. Next. Now, we wait for a response in the receiving station. That's the heart, the anahat chakra. Um, be completely impartial and try and feel a yes or no answer. Now, very often we're attached to what we want the answer to be, so we don't listen. So we have to try and, if we are attached, we need to try and let go of the attachments and truly have an open mind and heart. Like, okay, okay, I am willing to hear something I don't want to hear. I'm willing to hear something opposite of what I want. You see? So then, this yes or no answer, when you feel it in the heart, when you feel a no, very often the heart here feels tense. There's a mm feeling about it. And when there's a yes, there's a feeling about it. Okay, that, yes, that's what I'm doing. Okay, okay. When Swamiji asked us to move here five years ago, we weren't sure. We were in the middle of Los Angeles doing what we thought we were doing <laughs> for our guru. And suddenly, Swamiji said, okay, switch your gears. Now, we had lived in Gurgaon for four years before that in North Indian, India. And we came back to America for a little while and then ended up here. But really, we had to meditate on it because even though, yes, we've devoted our life and we say yes to our Swamiji anyway, but when you're even saying yes to your guru, you have to get the football players inside, <laughs> at least the majority of the football players inside, to say yes, too. And so I had a dream where I saw the suitcase packed, what we would do at the FRRO, because, you know, we're foreigners, <laughs> although we have our OCIs now because of his dad. Um, I saw us flying into Delhi, doing things, coming to Chennai, doing things. I, I saw so much that that turned out to be a reality. But when I had that dream, I could then say, oh, yes. And not only yes, but yes, I know it's right. I, and, and it was right. Uh, there's been no doubt since that. So we want to get to a point where we have a feeling where there's no doubt. There's just no doubt. I remember when I joined this path and took discipleship, there was no doubt. Now, some people have doubt, okay. But, but there are times when we just know it's right and we have no doubt. That's when you get the real answers. Um, sometimes the feeling will be very definite, but it, if, if it isn't clear, there are a few things you can do to clarify the response that you've received. So one is, you can <coughs> go forward, one is um, try posing alternative solutions. So suppose you, s you were asking a yes or no question, should I do this or should I do that, and you, you didn't quite get a yes or no on, then try a few other solutions. And if your heart relaxes on a different solution, maybe that's the right one. If you feel tense around all, all it, the whole time, then maybe either your question is not clear or maybe the answer is not happening. I, there have been a few times when something not pleasant happened, quite difficult happened. And I said, Divine Mother, let me know in a year, within a year, why, you know, what, what was going on in, within a year. 
because some things take a while for us to come around to and finally receive the correct answer. And, and a few times when I've asked this, it, it's definitely been within the year. Remember, the answer doesn't come on a mental level. You can't think yourself to it. You have to suspend thoughts and get it on an intuit intuitive level. That's why I was saying you feel the tension or the relaxation. That's a feeling. That's not, well, I came up with this brilliant solution while I was meditating there. And, you know, I have no idea what I felt about it, but boy, is it brilliant. And I'm going to try that. No. You want to, you want to check in with how it felt. Okay, so you can go back now to the dark. Okay, so let's close our eyes. We're going to try this experiment now. So try and think of the issue. You might have been thinking about it while you were meditating. Try and come up with a question. Maybe for now, just a yes or no question about something. Should I do this? Should I do that? Rather than an open-ended question. Like what's trying to happen is more open-ended. But just think of something. Feel within. If you feel any tension, tense that part of your body until it relaxes. You, t you tense it, and then you relax, and then you can feel that relaxation. Okay, so pose that question now to the divine. Feel as though you are radiating it out of your Agya Chakra to the divine. Feel as though all your will and desire and hopes and wishes are behind this request. If you do it with full energy, you can usually get an answer. Now once you feel you have sent that out, relax the heart. Take a nice deep breath and exhale. And try and feel if there was a yes or no in your heart. Try and feel if you say the word yes, is there tension or relaxation? If you say the word no, is there tension or relaxation? Okay, so as I said, it's difficult to do this in a deep and meaningful way in a group of 100. So I, w I would suggest when you get home, and also we have this written down on a sheet of paper. All these exercises are written or in a file that we can send to you if, if you want them. Okay, let's go on to the next. Okay, the worry fast is fabulous. <laughs> Yogananda Ji spoke about this. Okay, to understand karma, you must realize that thoughts are things. Oh, this is the thing that Dharmarajan had said earlier. So remember, our worries are thoughts that are happening, and they work on matter. The very universe in the final analysis is composed not of matter, but of consciousness. Matter responds far more than people realize to the power of thought, for willpower directs energy, and energy in turn acts upon matter. Matter indeed is energy. Okay. So, Yoganandaji Ji suggested this. Now, if three times a day for a worry fast, worry fast means, and you'll find out, but worry fast is if we become aware of our thoughts on a moment by moment um, basis, often if we meditate, we really realize this that there are just thoughts streaming through our brains. And very often, they are worries. You know, what about my job? What about my child? What about my food? What about the taxi? What about, I don't like this. Uh, you know, just what's going to happen? This is scary. And then we think of all sorts of things. I'll get fired, then I'll be in the gutter, then my whole family will be mad at me. Then, you know, I mean, just, worries. Okay, so Yogananda Ji said go on a worry fast three times a day to shake off all worries and then we will begin to have clarity of mind. If we realized how often we are worrying 
it's a very big waste of time. The mind has to think. That's its role in life. I must think. That's why in meditation we give it a technique because the mind says, I must be doing something. So it's like, okay, here's your technique. Maybe you'll get to a point where you don't have to think anymore. But for now, here's your technique. And so this worry thing is the same thing. It's a technique to try and, oh, get rid of some things. So in the morning, now he says 7 o'clock. It can be any time. At 7 o'clock in the morning, say to yourself, all, is this one? All my worries of the night are cast out, and from 7 to 8 a.m., I refuse to worry. No matter how troublesome are the duties ahead of me, I am on a worry fest. So, every time a worry comes to mind, you say this affirmation. I'm on, sorry. Now, in the beginning, it's very hard because the mind says, wait a minute. You normally let me think whatever I want to think. And I get to torture you as much as I want. So why are you like trying to tell me I can't torture you? So instead, we say, I am now going to start controlling you. You know, pranayama, control the energy, control the mind. Why not? So next, in the afternoon, from noon to 1 PM, say, I am cheerful. I will not worry. So, during that time, you maybe set your timer. You know, the one that you start on one hour and then it's 59, 58, 57. <laughs> You've got that on there. You know, as long as you see those numbers going, you're not going to worry. And every time a worry comes up, you just say, I am cheerful. I will not worry. Okay? And lastly, the evening worry fest. <laughs> So in the beginning, in the evening, between 6 and 9 o'clock, ooh, three hours. <laughs> Can we do it? I don't know. Three hours is pretty rough. While in the company of your spouse or hard to get along with relatives or friends, <laughs> which rarely happens, I'm sure. You know, Most of the time, we're just in an idyllic environment, and we're just so happy. Mentally make a strong resolution, OK? Within these three hours, I will not worry. I refuse to get vexed, even if I am nagged. No matter how tempting it is to indulge in a worry feast, I will resist the temptation. I must not sabotage my peace heart by shocks of worries. I cannot afford to worry. I am on a worry fast. You will find, even if you try it for, just try it for one day, or just try it for one hour, you will be amazed at how it helps because the mind and the scientists are really doing a lot of research on the brain these days. The mind goes like this when an issue is unresolved. And an issue is unresolved when we have an attachment for the way it should be or, or we're just unhappy in general. And so the, the brain repeats itself to try and get a resolution. But some things that it's repeating are useless. What does a worry do? Nothing. A worry doesn't solve a problem. It tortures us. It makes us unhappy. And it makes us focused on a bad thing. And when we, as long as we are focused on this bad thing, we can't focus on a solution that might lift us out. Okay. So that's the worry fest. OK, one more. So this is a nice change your karma uh, technique. Uh, Yoganandaji Nandaji said, there are no obstacles, there are only opportunities. Others have said that as well, but he said it too. OK? So to change your karma, the power of a particular karma is determined by two factors, energy and willpower. Those same two factors can change our karma. We want to remove the subconscious blocks of uncertainty and doubt. These are those cross currents, 14 cross currents of the ego. Develop a single-minded purpose. Okay. Rechannel your energy's direction. Expand your energy generating the right energy to offset karma 
versus writing it through. So what happens? Karma comes and then it's over. And we go, Phew, that was over. I didn't have to do anything. That was just a bad day of, of moods. No problem. I can just ride that through. I don't even have to stop it. I can just say the next day, woo, that was a bad day. I was really in a mood. But then what if we're depressed for a little bit longer? And Yoganandaji said, bad moods are negative karma, bad karma coming to us. We start to suffer more. It's not just a day of waiting it through. It becomes days of waiting it through. The heart gets contracted. We start uh, worrying even more. We just can't feel uplifted. We can't feel inspired. And, and we might start being gruff with other people because I'm in a bad mood, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say whatever I want. So then we might say to ourselves, we might catch ourselves and say, you know what? I got to move myself out of this. And Yoganandaji said that we can shift our consciousness to get out of moods. So in that case, here's the mood energy. And it requires a higher energy of shifting the consciousness to be able to get out of that mood. The, the exercise Dharmarajan gave us earlier when we were breathing inward all the positive and bringing it up here and trying to burn it here and then when we breathe out try and release that energy. That's one way to shift the energy. You can shift the energy through meditation. You can shift the energy through these energization exercises. You can shift your energy just listening to a nice mantra, a nice chant. You, and you, you can find that you felt this way a moment ago, and now you're feeling this way. It's like, what happened? Did I think my way out of it? No. Because a lot of times moods and negative thought patterns and criticalness, it's a mental habit we get into. It's useless also, just like the worries. So we want to shift out of those because it usually does no good to go to the therapist and say, well, I'm in a bad mood every time my mom tells me that I have to make more vadas and I just really don't like that. And so instead of that, <laughs> we can, <laughs> or eat more vadas, one or the other, make them or eat them. Um, and so, so instead, we want to shift out of that because it's useless anyway. That's different than if there's a real feeling going on. A real feeling, a real feeling of hurt, a real feeling of, of disappointment, a real feeling of grief. You don't have to squish those down. <laughs> But you can shift those as well, but you don't want to ignore them because when we squish real feelings down, they come up in strange ways. You know, we, f we feel unhappy about something, you know, maybe someone said something really bad to us or a boss was demeaning. It works on us. We say, no, 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 I'm a good yogi. I can just shift out of it. I'll just shift out of it. You know, he can do whatever he does. I'm shifting out of it. And then later on, someone walks by and we say, why are you walking that way? <laughs> and it, it's like, oh, I probably said that because I was upset. So then you can resolve the thing in your heart. Oh, I see. I was feeling this way. OK, resolve. Let it go. That's his problem. This is my problem. Not with the attitude of repression, but with the attitude of moving through it. And then you go, oh, now I feel much better. So that, that's a different thing than I woke up on the wrong side of the bed, and now I don't like anybody, and stay out of my way, and I mean it. OK? Um, so generate the right energy to offset karma versus writing it through. Develop new good karma in, same, in some other field of activity. That means if something really difficult is going on, like, I'm an engineer, and I'm only going to look for an engineering job. I'm looking only for an engineering job. There are no engineering jobs. That's really unfair. I'm, I've got to have an engineering job. And there's no engineering jobs coming to you. I'm going to shake the world for the engineering job. But we're attached to having the engineering job. Maybe there's another job you either take temporarily that can bring some income in, or 
wow, you know what? Engineering's okay, but really I'm a people person and I don't feel like solving things all the time. That's kind of the issue I had. And I was a design engineer and all the little components were smaller and smaller and faster and faster. I, I would do microelectronics, so we would design chips and things like that. It's just like, how much smaller do these things have to be? And you have to read the trade magazine and make sure that you're on top of everything and you have to care. Now, for some, that might be, that is the most fascinating thing I've ever explored in my life. I'm so glad I did that, but for me, Suddenly I was working in the bookstore at a Ananda Palo Alto. <laughs> because I realized, oh, I want to have a more people thing. I'm glad I did it for what I did, but something was trying something else was trying to happen. And um, for a while I felt self-conscious about it. I'm not just a bookstore worker. I mean, I was an engineer, you know. <laughs> I'm not just a lowly kind of devotee, just without a brain, you know. So anyway, I had to get through some of that. <laughs> we identify with our jobs, don't we? We say, I am this, and we're not, even if we really love it. We're not that. Okay. So the karmic exercise, karma exercise, is a way to introspect. This is, we're going to end with a visualization, but this is the last exercise. So in this exercise, we're trying to figure out, is there a part of me that paralyzes my effort that acts counter to what I want to do or accomplish? So again, you're going to get a piece of paper on this. We're not going to practice that now because we're running out of time, but I'm going to go through it. Next. Think of a way to redirect this blocked energy positively and expansively. Next. Devote yourself energetically to this new direction. Okay. So this is figuring out, you know, when we want a certain thing, we tend to hit our head against a wall. And at some point you have to say, I've been hitting my head against a wall now for a few months, for a year. I need to try something else. And so this is what this exercise is good for. When we have really tried our hardest in one direction and we're so focused, and very often when we're focused in one direction, our whole level of happiness depends on that. And since we aren't getting what we want, we, are, we can become extremely unhappy. So we, we want to notice ourselves. Am I hitting my head against the wall in one direction? Am I doing this? Do I need to do something else? Something's not working here. And that's when the question, what's trying to happen? And we can open our mind and say to the divine, please guide me. Help me find out what I'm supposed to be doing here. What is trying to happen? And listen in the heart for the answer. So we're going to end with this Visualization. It, d it won't take very long. <coughs> okay. So sit up straight as in a meditative position and close your eyes. Roll your shoulders back to open the chest, open the heart, and I'll read this. It's a visualization. Karma is an expression of divine love. Everything that comes to us is made especially for us by God to free us from all limitation. Visualize God as the divine mother standing before you, or if you prefer, another saint that you feel drawn to. See her eyes gazing deeply into your own, filling you with her love. Know that she is with you always. Think now of a karma that is challenging you. See Divine Mother holding, you, holding before you this karmic test. 
See her smile as she reaches out and offers this test to you with loving kindness. Reach out your arms and take hold of this karma. Bring this karmic challenge into your heart. Accept this precious gift sent from the wisdom of the universe. Know that it is a perfect gift sent by Divine Mother to help your soul become free. In your heart, embrace this karmic test fully with gratitude and trust. This karma can help you raise your energy level and consciousness to where your godly nature resides. Focus now at the point between the eyebrows. See yourself rising to meet this karmic test and transcending its limitations. See yourself becoming free in God. Feel the bliss of being united with spirit. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti